One in three young women, the biggest segment of consumerism, consider garments worn once or twice to be old. Fashion has inevitably changed consumers' purchasing habits. Teens are compelled to keep up with the latest fashion trends in response to the demands fed by social media platforms, including TikTok and Instagram amidst this internet era. As part of the reason, every year the world consumes an estimated 80 billion pieces of clothing, a 400% increase from two decades ago. Trendy fashion brands promise to offer affordable clothes to your doorstep within five business days. It would be difficult to escape this oversaturated world of fast fashion if you have been accustomed to such comfort and ease. We are all surrounded by fast fashion every day, but does the public know anything about it? No. No. No, I don't know. Fast fashion? Yeah. No. No. Uh, is it the ever-changing face of today's fashion? Uh, what? Fast fashion. Nope. Evidently, not everyone knows. Fast fashion is a fairly new concept that originated in the 2000s with retail brands like Zara and H&M. As the name suggests, fast fashion emphasizes the feature of delivering the trendiest item to customers at astonishing speeds for affordable prices. However, the clothes industry has already been a constantly evolving production system since the 1800s. Before the 1800s, most people relied on rearing sheep to gather wool for spinning yarn to weaving cloth to manufacture garments. As you would imagine, this took a lot of time. After the Industrial Revolution, the cycle of fashion accelerated. New textile machines, factories, and ready-made clothing with a variety of sizes sprang up. The invention of the sewing machine led to a very quick decline in garment prices and a massive expansion in the size of the clothes manufacturing industry. Yet the rise and shine of fast fashion began in the 1960s, when young people embraced trendy yet affordable clothing to follow these new patterns and rejected the fitted traditions of older generations. Fashion trends started to pick up speed. Massive textile factories were popping up all over developing countries as fashion designers scrambled to keep up with the rising demand for inexpensive garments. This is how fast fashion was born. Over two centuries of development, fast fashion has become life's essential. Whenever you want a dress for your Christmas party, smart, casual for an interview, or even sportswear, I asked Fawn what she thought about fast fashion. I think it's a good thing in the sense of it's affordable to a lot of people, so anyone can go and buy a full outfit for under thirty pounds. Mm -hmm. And there's a large like size range, and with websites like Sheen and stuff, there's not much of a markup on plus size clothing. And I'm plus size myself, and I do struggle with having to look for plus size clothing, then when I find something, it's really expensive. But the truth is, the negatives far outweigh the positives. On the other side, it's really bad for our environment. It's a lot of the pollution that we're getting now is now from fast fashion. And you'll see all the photos of it in landfills in oceans and things like that. So that is causing a lot of pollution. And You'll see like people on TikTok will be posting about, oh yeah, this is the new trend. The excessive consumption due to low pricing is the fundamental cause of environmental degradation, including the consumption of water and carbon emissions when producing clothes. Since consumers can access fast fashion effortlessly with cheap prices, they will not cherish the clothes as people used to in the olden days. All the out-of-fashion, not frequently worn clothing will only end up in our bins. The House of Commons Environmental Audit Committee in 2019 showed that around 30,000 tonnes of textile waste ends up in household black bins every year, sent to landfill or incinerators. Less than 1% of the material used to produce clothing is recycled into new clothing at the end of its life, with one survey showing that nearly a fifth of 2,000 British shoppers surveyed admitted to binning clothes thus contributing to polluting the world around us. Don't you think it's a waste of money if you bin clothes that you will only wear a few times? Aside from the huge waste produced during the manufacturing process, the material itself uses a lot of natural resources and creates water and air pollution. Take denim as an example. Although it is made of 100% cotton, it takes 10 to 12 months to fully biodegrade. However, 
Denim is blended with other synthetic fibres, like spandex for added stretch. As a result, it can take much longer to biodegrade depending on the ratio of the blend and often leading microfibres to end up in rivers, lakes and our oceans. It's time for you to distance yourself from fast fashion. You might ask, how can I stay away from cheap and fancy clothes? There are way more alternatives to fast fashion out there for you to explore, such as buy less and consider cost per wear. When you're looking to buy an item of clothing, ask yourself how many times you are likely to wear it before getting rid of it. This is a tough one if you have budget constraints. When we buy cheaper clothing, however, we think we are saving more money than we are. Should you spend £9 on a top that will last you three months, or £59 on a top that will last 10 years? Give your clothes a new life by upcycling. Whether you're upcycling things you resell or buying products from designers, it's always nice to know that you have something that is completely unique. Take Nina as an example. Hi, I'm Nina. Uh, I'm from Slovenia, so a bit far away from you. Mm. I'm a textile engineer and I'm a designer of a recycled brand called Nina Rosina. As well, uh, I'm a founder and a leader of sewing courses and workshops about sewing and uh, upcycling, recycling, uh, textiles and other materials. That's why I always use like old shirts or I upcycle men's sweaters or things like that. So always something new from something old. Repairing an item and giving it a new life is a great skill and a wonderful feeling. These days, many brands and designers are making new designs from used clothes. As a textile engineer, I know how much textile we already have in the world. I know how much it can be produced in just a single day. It's like enormous, enormous masses of textiles that are made and also clothes and how much they exchange in the shops. Like usually it was like two times a year. Now it's six, ten times a year that they change in a store. What do they do with all the clothes that are not bought? So usually they just burn it. They sell it to somewhere else so that we don't know to Africa or lands that are, you know, we don't know what's actually going on there. Plenty of items that were once en route to landfill have been reclaimed by some very creative people. There is also huge social and economic benefit for small local businesses, as well as rural village industries to consume their upcycled products, and also a great way to show support to every upcycled product maker who strongly believes in a level of craftsmanship that we just don't see very much anymore. Cheap clothing not only wastes your money, it also destroys the planet we are living in. We still have a long way to get rid of fast fashion. But as long as we work together to combat fast fashion, we will see the decline of fast fashion someday soon. Mm -hmm.